Folks, today marks the beginning of a very special celebration. One I've been wanting to do and been planning for a long time. Not of just dedicated talent, but of a life itself. Because for those unaware, our motto today, Felix the Judge, lost his life now a few years back in an unfortunate car accident. But while a soul is lost, yes, a mark has been left for all of us, for all times. Felix's Bomb Pack is but one of his many works to have graced the Don't Starve Together workshops for years. However, I wish to honor the man by taking the next few weeks to showcase as many of his mods that I can. And what's better than starting with a bang? Thank you, Felix. This is for you. And like the positive soul many remember him as, Felix enjoyed giving people options and helping them along with his mods. For his bomb pack, Felix grants us the ability to not only enable some bombs over others, but also adjust their crafting recipes. As always, we will look to keep things at their default levels for the showcase itself. However, I actually do highly recommend that you do use some of their alternative crafts, as the recipes themselves not only make more sense, they use some interesting materials along the way, and that's something I can always appreciate. But that truly only applies to the more fancy, splody things, as bombs like the small bomb here will always require some flint, niter, and papyrus to create. And you should note that every bomb craft within this mod grants three bombs total. Very nice. And very splody. The small bomb does 75 damage to hostile mobs, 50 damage to you and other players within its radius, and will damage any of the environment and or structures around at the time of said explosion. Which doesn't actually take long after you toss any of the bombs you'll see here today, so be very mindful there. Oh, and yes, one can actually spam bomb throws to boot. Good start. But let us bring the heat already, shall we? Once more, the large bomb here is not actually configurable, so the craft you see is the craft you get. But what separates this boom from the last one? Well, not only is the boom bigger at 200 damage over 75, the large bomb boasts a larger, fiery radius of explosion, meaning anything not obliterated outright is gonna feel the burn including resources on the ground, so make note there. The actual explosion radius is, again, pretty wide, so be mindful of the fact that you might be the one to feel sad burn if you ain't careful. Have fun, though. That said, the true fun begins now as we enter the more specialized bomb territory, like with the spore bomb here. The default recipe is what you see before you. However, the alternative option will have you forking over three green caps, six rot over three, and one gunpowder instead of one hound tooth. So, there you go. And the spore bomb itself is likely my favorite out of the bunch, as it accomplishes something I have always wanted access to far more of the characters within this game. Crowd control. Initially, the explosion does but 50 damage to targets. However, the spore cloud that follows will proceed to deal 20 damage per tick to anything, and yes, I do mean anything, stuck within it. The spore circles last for a full minute to boot, and offer a unique way to manage fights, and I enjoy that prospect immensely. So well done, Felix. And note, there is a bit of speed reduction to anything stuck within the clouds. Next up, the Shadow Bomb. One that I am unfortunately not too sure about in regards to what it actually does overall, but we'll get to that. For now, this is the default recipe for the Nightmarish Balls of Death. However, the more difficult recipe is as follows. Three monster meat, three nightmare fuel, and one living log. So make note. But here's the thing about the Shadow Bomb. While it deals a whopping 100 damage to both mobs and yourself, it also haunts us, apparently. For us, that means an additional loss of 25 sanity if we happen to be within the explosion radius. However, I'm not exactly sure what that means for other mobs. Like, for example, haunting hounds has a chance to change them to a fire or ice variant. So does hitting them with one of these bombs mean the same thing? Not too sure there. 
But I can tell you that these magic bombs won't actually break structures. So there's that. And then there are these. Ice Bombs, another favorite of mine, as they too allow for some varied playstyles, potentially. By default, they will cost you 6 Ice, 1 Papyrus, and 3 Niter. However, choose the alternative to make them with 3 Ice, 1 Papyrus, and 1 Blue Gem each. Your choice. Ice Bombs are great in that once they go boom, targets will not only take 50 damage, but also suffer from three levels of coldness instantly. This freezing effect is enough to freeze most any mob that isn't a big bad boss type in one go, with said bosses needing two to three boom blasts in order to freeze themselves. That to me is pretty reasonable. But at the end of the day, I just enjoy having the option to approach cold-blooded mass murder a bit differently, if you know what I mean. And to build off that, you guys do know me. I'd love to see more electrifying options to do just that. So, the Vault Bomb is actually a step in the right direction in my eyes. Both recipes are pretty much the exact darn same at the end of the day, apart from the more difficult one requiring a Vault Goat Horn instead of Niter. So, keep that in mind. At their base, the Vault Bombs will deal but 50 damage. But come on now, folks, we're talking about electrical damage here. So why use them on anything other than wet targets? The Vault Bombs do 175 damage to anything wet, and I simply adore the possibilities. So come on now, Clay. Have water balloons work on all mobs and such already. I just want to shock the world. But finally, the Sticky Bomb. A very close second for my pick of favorites, I gotta say. Two Slurtle Slime, one Papyrus, and three Silk are what are needed by default. However, use the alternative option to up the recipe to three Slurtle Slime, one Papyrus, and a chunk of phlegm from the Eucus of all things. Very nice. And finally just gives use to phlegm itself for Pete's sake. Sticky Bombs not only deal the respectable 100 damage to most anything around, they actually slow down a target's attack speed for 4 seconds each blast. Modifying the attack speed of hostile mobs has always been an inquiry of mine, as the unique feel of combat that would come from that would be welcomed. So, I'm all about it, but be careful. If you get hit by these, you'll be trapped, just like how Eucus gets ya. Oh, and I'll just quickly mention that use of any of these explosions shown here today while done under in the caves will cause earthquakes. So, make note of that. And there you have it, everyone. Felix the Judge's bomb pack for Don't Starve Together. But our first look into the abundance of talent he has placed on the workshop over the years. From unique takes on weapons and tools, to expanded armors, to explosions galore as seen here today, Felix's mark has been left for all to remember, and it is my pleasure to share it with all of you. Please, show love to his work when you get the chance, and always appreciate the life you have. Use it for helping and loving others. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Stay safe, take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.